Hi, welcome to Highly Social. I'm your host, Mike Eaton. Today, we're joined by the infamous worm himself. It's the man, Casey Rocket. Wee wee wee. Hey, Mike, how's it going? It's great. <laughs> <laughs> Just got sad immediately. <laughs> hey, man, what is it doing? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's always crazy uh, to see you not worming. Yeah, you're telling me, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've built up this empire, and sometimes it's hard to look in the mirror. You know, it's hard to recognize who I was before. <laughs> You know, I worm all the time, but who's worming for me? You know yeah. what I mean? Everyone asks, you know, what is worm, but no one asks, how is worm? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how is worm? Do he want a cup of mud? Yeah. No one ever say that. Cold, cold or hot, Mr. Worm? No one ever say that. That's a great That's a great point. No one ever asks how the worm like is mud. Um, <laughs> <laughs> moving on. I, mo- moving on. <laughs> I, uh, I've been wa- watching. A, you've been doing all sorts of fun, awesome not just stand up stuff, but like the weather report. Uh huh. And like really getting getting riffy with it. It's been fun to watch. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, I got my freaking damn riff boots and a lot of different steel toed baskets. You know what I mean? I don't know what that. Is. But yeah, I do a lot of different riff. <laughs> that didn't. No, yeah. no. We immediately went off track there. Yeah. Nice, yeah. nice, nice. <laughs> steel toed baskets. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. I, uh, yeah, man, I do a lot of different stuff. That makes me think of like whenever they used to do those riff mics at Creek or whatever, and everybody would be like, here comes the king of the riff, and I'll get up there and I'm just eating shit. <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> like, okay, this is your hero? Yeah. <laughs> Dipping your toes in a lot of steel-toed baskets? This is your king? <laughs> this is the hill we're dying on? <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, literally on the way here, I have a, a group chat that I send memes with and stuff, and they're a bunch of them are in Austin, but LA all over, but it's like 25 people. And there are a lot of us that, like, when you release a new video, we'll start quoting pieces of it and it's very funny it's like daddy if you give a goose a gut you know, why did the goose have to pay income tax <laughs> how about the little boy yeah. yeah yeah i love your son he's in the car he's in the it's hot outside i know did you leave a window cracked no absolutely not yeah, well fine. actually my window's permanently cracked i have no driver's side window oh <laughs> just doesn't work <laughs> so how about that <laughs> i'm good in the good in the winter <laughs> and the summer, probably. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody, when they talk about making it, they talk about having the wind in your hair. But it's kind of like uh, when it's forced on you, you know, <laughs> it's not as good as it. Yeah. <laughs> it's not all it's cracked up to be. Yeah. I think they they mean a convertible. Yeah, that's true. Not just having your yeah. the window down on your Ford Escape. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making it. The wind's in my hair. <laughs> just driving to the methadone clinic. <laughs> You're like, fucking, we did it. <laughs> <laughs> Call my mom to borrow thirty dollars. Dude, I have frequent intrusive thoughts when I have the window down and I'm enjoying the breeze on my face. <laughs> I used to, as a kid, stick my head all the way out the window in the, the back seat. Uh-huh. My dad would get mad, you know, distract him. And he told me a story about a friend of his that had his head out the window and someone threw something out the window and it hit him in the eye and it, and it like popped his eyeball. And oh, so he, he does want less eye now because of that. So now anytime I have my head out the window, I'm like, what if someone throws something? <laughs> what if somebody throw an apple core out of the semi truck? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what happened to that little girl in Hereditary. She was trying to enjoy <laughs> trying to enjoy the nighttime breeze. Next thing she knows, her noggin's freaking bonked off on damn Route 66. Get eaten by ant. Now you love South Korean horror films. <laughs> that's something we know. You're yeah. a big movie guy. Yeah, yeah. I'm like a big. That's always been my thing. Yeah. What What are some? So I'm bad at movies. Uh huh. I I don't know <laughs> why, but most of them I haven't seen. Yeah, I remember we talked about we were like talking about something like Goodfellas or so. Yeah, it's yeah, Goodfellas. Seen that. Yeah, you still haven't got around to it. <laughs> it upsets yeah. people. You've got to put aside an afternoon. Yeah. Do I, I though? It, is it going to hold up? Is oh it good yeah. in 2022? It's oh, not yeah. just, it was good back then, and we all have nostalgia because we saw it when we were younger? No, it's amazing. Okay. It's Scorsese, man. It's so good. What else does he make? I know that's a good name, but what Scorsese? else Scorsese? Yeah. He did Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, that's a great film. That's, so, a, that's a good one. Yeah. Casino. I like Wolf of Wall Street. I haven't seen Casino. Casino's really good. Do uh, Does that have De Niro in it? Mm-hmm. All right, cool. Yeah, when I was uh, drinking during quarantine... Uh, my girlfriend woke up at like 7 a.m. one morning, and I was out there just hammered watching Casino. And she was like, when I was still trying to hide that I was drinking, she's like, what are you doing? I was like, I couldn't sleep. <laughs> just clearly <laughs> blackout drunk. The sun is up. I couldn't see this child watch Casino. <laughs> yeah, I pray goes right. You got to watch this part. Yeah, she fucking hated me. <laughs> 
Well, yeah. So, you want to order food? I might just, I used to always pretend like I was, uh, like I just didn't want to go to bed. Like I was like a rowdy 10-year-old. Like, I don't want to go to sleep tonight, but really I'm just on speed, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, um, babe, I don't feel like sleeping tonight. It's like no normal human being just doesn't sleep at night. It's not something that people do. Like, oh, I don't feel like sleeping tonight. Yeah, it's, I, it's just not, not a big thing for me. Yeah, just, I don't feel like resting. I'm, yeah. oh, I'm just ready to go. <laughs> Yeah, she was upset. Yeah. So, all right. So, I so I should watch Goodfellas. I should watch. Do you feel like that happens a lot though with movies? Like they don't hold up, or do you, do you not have that problem? No, no. Everything Scorsese's ever did is really good. There's like a lot of. Th- I mean, anything from the '90s is still pretty relatable. But stuff in like the '80s. Once you start going older in time, a lot of those things don't hold up just because of like cultural differences and like. I saw, what's the, is it Police Academy? Yeah. I saw the first one the other day. It was on TV at a hotel I was staying at. Uh Oh, this is a funny movie. Yeah. This is pretty funny. I've never seen it. A lot of the humor back then was just (laughs) racial stereotypes. Yeah. And they were just like, look, we're going to, we're going to say racist stuff. But it was funny. (laughs) Airplane might still be the funniest movie ever made. Airplane is so funny. Yeah. And then the Naked Gun, the Naked Gun Two is one of the funniest movies I've ever I've never fucking seen. The second seen. one, it's so good. it's better than the first one. It's so funny. Oh. Yeah, it's really good. Leslie Nielsen, he he's dead, right? Yeah, he died. Damn, that sucks. <laughs> that sucks so bad. Yeah, a while ago. Yeah, it's been a minute. <laughs> fucking he passed. I, dude, yeah. I'm retarded. I when I see, I thought for a full day that that Lenny Kravitz was dead and was sad about it and was listening to, like, Lenny Kravitz songs, remembering, like, when my dad had played them for me as a kid. And then I remember he just died in Hunger Games. Your dad played you Lenny Kravitz? <laughs> yeah, I know. What kind of memories? <laughs> what kind of dad you got, bro? American woman. <laughs> God, he's going to be missed. A once-in-a-generation talent. <laughs> my dad bought a Porsche, like, convertible Boy, my sophomore like, year. Yeah. And it was, like, a really nice one. It got delivered from Florida, and he's super pumped about it. It's bright red, and it gets pulled up in front of the house, and he's like, you ready to go on a drive? And I'd never been in a manual car up, up until that point, and it was just really nice. So we get in, and he's playing Kenny Loggins and Lenny Kravitz. and just, <laughs> just, <laughs> What, a, what an array. <laughs> what a wide wow. array of tunes. <laughs> <laughs> Jimi Hendrix was next on my list. But, yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. <laughs> he, was, he was playing Carly Simon and <laughs> Die Antwoord, you know? <laughs> Diane Ross. Yeah, uh, he's listening to MF Doom and yeah. Elton John. It was <laughs> Your dad's fucking you know, dad awesome. Stuff. Yeah, <laughs> dad rock. <laughs> Diane, where does dad rock, dude? <laughs> dude, I was at a party the other day and I put on one of their music videos. Oh, it just yeah. upset everybody. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. They can be racist. They're South African. You're like trying to explain all the <laughs> cultural zeitgeist stuff. <laughs> It's okay. They have a really hard upbringing. <coughs> <laughs> They're from where Elon Musk is from. It's cool. <laughs> they kind of made Tesla a little bit. <laughs> they helped make. <laughs> they were in a think tank for Tesla. Yolandi Visa and, and Ninja helped create <laughs> Tessa. <laughs> oh, man. Tessa. Tessa. <laughs> oh, man. Dude, I'm still. Uh, just like freaking out about last night. It doesn't even feel real. You have moments like that from your career where you're like, what just happened? Oh, yeah. Well, it's so did you do really good? The first show, I didn't do really good. Oh. I, didn't, I didn't do great. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, I did, I would say like a seven out of 10. Probably. Were you the host or you were yeah, the feature? I was hosting. Okay. So I came out and like, I was like, yeah, I, I made the mistake of trying to go into a longer joke right off the bat. Yeah. It didn't have a payoff for like a minute and a half. Mm hmm. So I just didn't get, like, an immediate laugh. Yeah. And so it just didn't feel good from that perspective. But all the stuff got laughs, and it, and it went good. But one of the punchlines got more groans than it should have. Uh-huh. <laughs> but my closer to good, I got a big, like, I can always tell how good I did on a host set by when I say I'm done, if they clap or not. Yeah. Because like, it's, it's just very violent. <laughs> That's a good indicator. <laughs> Sometimes after you say, all right, you guys ready to get the show started? They'll be like... Yeah, like you have to say, so like it, you'll end your joke and they'll just be like, okay, more comedy now, please. You know? Yeah. But this yeah. one they clapped, so it wasn't bad. And people that were there saw it, said I did good, but mm-hmm. no. And then I also, like, then I go and I watch Louie. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, 
oh, everything he says is so funny it hurts. <laughs> like, so what I thought was a seven was really closer to a negative 45. Yeah. <laughs> like, I should probably just quit and kill myself. It always puts things into perspective. Yeah, I opened for, like, Sam Talent and mm-hmm. Boise years ago. And it, like, changed my life. Like, after he was up there, I threw out all my material and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's like a big turning point in my life. But I remember I thought my set went really good. And then he went up there and just did Sam Talent shit, just yeah. leveled the room. And I was, like, so embarrassed. I was like, oh, man, I'm fucking out of this. I shouldn't have done that friggin' damn Jar Jar material. Here I am four years later still doing Jar Jar stuff. So I just didn't know <laughs> that I would grow into it and learn to love it. <laughs> but, the first time I ever saw you, <clears throat> did a Jar Jar joke, and I almost fell out of a chair. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people don't know this, but I started comedy wearing a hat. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and hat once again. And then I uh, didn't realize I wasn't ready for it yet and took it off for a few years. And uh, now famously, I'm doing a hat thing again. So I'll tell them about what happened last night with your hat, Dan. Oh, my. For, first of all, I had an unbelievable <laughs> night last night. Uh-huh. Uh, I took some acid during the day, which was great. And then uh, I had some edibles in the evening, which probably contributed to the situation I'm about to tell you about. But uh, You know, acid lasts for like 12 hours, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I only had to go to work and stuff. It's not a big deal. That's but, true. But... Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Everything last night was just cool. You know what I mean? Like, And just being on a little bit of acid helped me, I guess, realize everything that was cool that was happening, you know? I just, I had a lot of cool interactions at Vulcan uh, during the Rogan show. Uh-huh. That just, like, everything just sort of was, like, going right in sort of a <laughs> weird kind of lucky way, you know? And then... Uh, uh, and then I was just thinking about, like, you were crushing it. You know what I mean? Like, I, everyone I know was just, like, having a really, like, the nights of their lives, <laughs> yeah. right? And fucking Fuzzy walks into Vulcan, right? And uh, uh, he walks into Vulcan, and I go, hey, man, what would you do tonight? And it hit me that second. Oh, his FBIA is uh-huh. tonight. And I went, did you? And I just, I was like, did you get through? And he goes, I got through. Now. And I've <laughs> cried twice in my adult life. <laughs> both have been in the last six weeks, and both have been in front of Fuzzy for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> and for whatever reason, this sent me over the edge, like in the <laughs> middle of Vulcan. I just started crying like a baby crying, not like a, not like a guy. Like I'm like. Uh... <laughs> I don't even think I've ever seen you be happy. I've never seen you oh, smile yeah. until today. I had to, Fuzzy had to, he must think I'm a lunatic, dude. I had, to, I had to stand next to him and I couldn't talk because I was so happy. So I had to text him that I was happy crying. So he's just standing next to me. He gets a text and he just goes, it just says, I'm just so happy for you, man. <laughs> I was just so happy all about my friends, dude. I wasn't even really having that great of a night myself. I was actually just kind of at work, if I really think about it. <laughs> Did you even go up? No. Okay. <laughs> just happy to be there, bro. Just happy to be cool, here. <laughs> no, wait, but, wait, but then... And then, then I walk... So I gotta go over to Creek, right? <laughs> now, we all know I've been doing a hat thing, right? <laughs> and, and I walk over to Creek, and I'm standing in the back of Creek, and Louie walks out of uh, the green room to leave, right? And what is he wearing? But a pink hat. No. And he looks at me, and we're right across the way, and I look back at him, right? And we make eye contact, and I go, like this, right? <laughs> and he goes... <laughs> he goes, no, thank you. <laughs> and, then, and then, and then I realize, I mean, I don't know. I, I've I've had this hat for years, dude. <laughs> it's, it's only now that I've realized this is my lucky hat, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> so turning around. I know, dude. I know it's my lucky. I know it's because it's the same feeling. I was so happy the rest of the night. It was the same feeling I had the night. I met my wife, you know what I mean? Like, I just knew <laughs> it was the one. I'm just waiting for a good time to ask, you know? Or the night Princess Diana died. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Will you be my hat, dude? <laughs> <laughs> Will you be my lawfully wedded hat? Whoa, wait, we all three have hats on. <laughs> Will you make me the luckiest man on earth? Be my <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. Hat cast. Hat cast. Night, what hat cast. <laughs> oh, my God. That I is be fucking insane. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just picture, like, Joe Rogan walking out of Vulcan and possibly... The largest, tallest man I in Austin trying. is just. <laughs> I, dude, I couldn't keep it together. I really was. It was very embarrassing. <laughs> so last night, uh, I get to Creek at like six thirty, 
And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I walk back. I, I go to the green. First off, when I walk in, Clay, the door guy, goes, Mike, no comics tonight. And I was like, all right, man, that sounds good. And he goes, no, no comics. And I was like, cool. And he goes, you have to leave. And I was like, Clay, I'm on the show. He goes, oh. You can go. That had like, to feel good. I was like, oh, yeah. thanks. But it was just so funny, like, no co- No, you have to have three comics, actually. You can't yeah. do no comics, or this won't work at all. <laughs> I walk back in the green room. I'm the first one there. I'm just, like, sitting. Uh, and then Ariel and uh, her friend Casey show up. And so they're back there. Uh, and we're kind of sitting. And then when Louis shows up, he's very nice. And <clears throat> he introduces himself. And he doesn't say his name, which I'm glad. Because it would have made me upset if he was like, I'm Louis. Like, no, shut up. We know. But, but say the <laughs> no, no, <right. laughs> say the n word. <laughs> yeah, show me your penis. <laughs> but so he shakes my hands, and the, then he goes, "How long have you guys been doing it?" And Ariel's like, "You know, eight and a half, nine years." And I was like, four years." And he was like, uh, "And I was like, but I work really hard. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm not bad. Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck, I should have lied or something." <laughs> but I just, I just, you know, whatever. So they s- start talking, and. Ariel uh, brings up her sister wrote a book about lesbian mermaids. The tracks, yeah. And I was like, oh, that has to be like the stinkiest pussy of all time, <laughs> right? Cause it's, under, it's, under the water? It's a, yeah, it's a fish vagina. Yeah. It's, it's got to be bad. It's, uh, you know. And Louis, like, oh, it doesn't necessarily have to smell. I'm glad he chimed in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and so then we're like arguing, well, like, where even would a mermaid's pussy be? And while we're having this like in depth discussion, like, would it be on the front? And then, like, well, what do fish have? And I was like, I think they have a cloaca. Like a, like a everything whole, and then Joe Rogan and Tony Hinchcliffe and a couple of their friends walk in. What the fuck is your life? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> play American Woman, yeah. <laughs> Siri, play American Woman. Uh, but so I was like, whoa, what, what the fuck? <laughs> so uh, thankfully, like I know Tony a little bit, so I'm like, hey man, good to see you. And then he introduced me. He's like, hey Joe, this is a funny comic, Mike. And I'm like, whoa, hi. <laughs> So I shake Joe's hand, and then we all do introductions. We all sit back down, and then Louie goes, so Joe, on a mermaid, where do you think the pussy is? <laughs> and Joe's like, well, fish, they, they lay eggs, and then other fish put their sperm on the eggs, so they don't really have, like, a fuck hole, you know? Like, there, there wouldn't even be, like, a pussy on a mermaid. And one of their friends is, like, a fighter guy's like, if there wasn't one, I'd make one. You know, mermaids are fucking hot. <laughs> oh, God. He'd, so like, he'd, like, punch a vagina into it? Yeah, but, <laughs> so, so now... They're just arguing. Yikers. But I was sitting there, and I'm pretty stoned, and I'm looking at all of these fucking, like, heroes just discussing where on a mermaid the pussy (laughs) would be. It's like... (sighs) It's just fucking unreal. Uh, We're artists. Yeah. yeah. So that's why the the first set didn't go as a plan, because it was like... Whoa! All right, I gotta go do jokes now. <laughs> I gotta go. I gotta go do jokes. <laughs> it does give me hope that like the the green room talk among our heroes is as retarded as yeah. ours is. <laughs> yeah, it's the same thing. <laughs> it is. Uh, it was cool. Well, it was also really cool. So uh, Ariel Isaac Norman was featuring, and she's great. She's crushing. Uh, and a couple of times, Louis goes and hears that there's big laughs and goes and listens to her set for a minute. Mm-hmm. And, like, I was like, wow, that's really cool. It, like, he's even doing that. And then he would go back and talk to Joe and all of them. And then as soon as the, Louis goes on stage, all of them rush to the back of the room. So now in the back of Creek, like, where you can't see him is Joe and Tony and all of them watching. Wow. Which, it was just so fucking cool because it was like, I, that's <clears> why <throat> I wanted to be there, too, is to watch yeah, Louis. and it's like it doesn't matter where you're at in comedy. You're still like, I just want to watch the fucking greats work. Yeah, but there was nowhere for me to go, so I sat in a chair in that little side stage area <laughs> and just had to sit there like <laughs> stifle my laugh. So there's not my obnoxious yeah. loud laugh coming out of the the wooden door. <laughs> Did you put Tony on your shoulders like a girl at an EDM festival? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Go on, Tony. <laughs> Get up there. W- wave at him. Hi, <laughs> 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 uh, Yeah, that's he's, funny. He's a fucking goat. No, uh, comedy's so weird because, like, uh, yeah, they're, they're, like it's no doubt an art form. But whenever I like, sometimes I'll like take myself too seriously. Like, uh, like I'll get in my head of, like, you know, like, people don't know what it's like to, like, freaking be out here, do work. And, and then you go on stage and you start telling your stupid fucking jokes. And you're like, 
I'm a joke. My life's a joke. (laughs) Why do I take myself seriously at all? (laughs) All I talk about is my nipples and fucking stupid Jar Jar Binks, and I'm not an artist. (laughs) Like, fucking tone it down, dipshit. (laughs) It is... (laughs) It is funny how serious we get about... (laughs) Yeah, because it's our whole lives, but when you look at it, like, macro, it's a big deal, but micro, you're like, I'm literally just going up there and talking about how I'm like a total mer from Impractical Jokers or whatever. (laughs) It's a new bit I'm working on. (laughs) (laughs) Don't release this. (laughs) It's it's going in the archives. (laughs) It's not ready yet. Um, Man, it's it's always interesting, too, because... your style of comedy, I haven't even figured out how to describe it to people. Yeah. Because there, there's not, a like, a genre. The same, you know, like, there's rock and punk rock, and you can kind of mix and match genres to describe music that way. But with comedy, I don't know what you would say. <laughs> you, yeah, I just have to send uh, people clips, usually. I think it's like, 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 it's like live flubber. Yeah. Live flubber, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I said that flubber thing. I texted you last <laughs> night. I did Cherrywood. And uh, it was it was fun, but there wasn't a lot of people there. And I was doing good, and then I just hit him with that flubber line. I was like, y'all ever fuck around and break out a piece of flubber in the club? Total, <laughs> total silence. <laughs> 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 like, frankly, kind of derailed shit for me. Like, it was going really good. I hit uh, him with that flubber. I need to go back and watch flubber. <laughs> yeah, get some more references. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I as much as it, like... Probably sucks, and I think I've said this to you before. I, of course, love to watch you crush, and it's very enjoyable. <laughs> but I personally enjoy way more watching people that hate you. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> so fun to watch boomers that just don't understand anything that's happening, <laughs> and people around them are dying laughing, and they're like, <laughs> like "It looks like there are people I've seen that look like they're having a stroke because they're just like." Why are you laughing? <laughs> what is he saying? <laughs> there was literally this girl. I've had a couple great moments in my life on stage where either the crowd will be silent or the crowd is loud, but I can hear one person say something about how much they don't like me. <laughs> and last night I was doing cherry wood and I said something that made everybody laugh. And I just hear this girl who's eating French fries. She just goes, she's right in the front row, like three feet away from me. And she just goes, it's not that funny. <laughs> like, okay, why are you fucking <laughs> what? And she looked like as close as I was like, you don't have to, you know, <laughs> right <poor>. here. Yeah. <laughs> just eat your french fries, you redheaded bitch. <laughs> she had red hair. It's, just, <laughs> it's also what did she hope to accomplish with that Like sentence? everybody be like, oh yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> our bad. Hmm. <laughs> Actually, back to hating this. <laughs> we don't like this. <laughs> oh. It's also very uh, fun. I uh, <clears throat> I don't remember what show it was, but it was one at Vulcan where it was packed uh-huh. like, to, the, to the gills. And you were up, and there was a guy sitting at one of the high tops in, on that back row kind of by the sound booth. And at the beginning <laughs> of your set, he was like... And, like, halfway through, he started, like, getting it. And by the end of it, he was standing up. And really? Just, like, <laughs> dying laughing. <laughs> and, like, holding onto the table, losing his fucking mind. <laughs> it was just, like, to watch him become a werewolf during your yeah. set. It's like, wow, he really likes this. this cool. Full liking. Yeah. Dude, my favorite was a few weeks ago. He's doing <clears throat> Secret Show. There's 250 people there. <laughs> Casey sets up his camera. And there's only one, or there's two, he's got his camera yeah. and catches the one guy in the whole <laughs> audience who just falls out of his seat yeah. for no reason during Casey's set. You saw that clip, didn't you? It's on Instagram. Listen to the clip. You know what else you hear in that set? You. Ha, 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 Mike, ha, 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 yeah. From me. Mike laughing, laughing oh, Mike really hard. Oh, wow. Okay. I, was, yeah. I rushed over to Secret Show to be able to watch that set, and then I was standing 15 feet from that chair when it fell, so I'm right by the camera, losing my goddamn mind. He was <laughs> Dude, just sit down. He dude. was totally yeah. <laughs> just, sit. just sit. That's there. all he asked. Just you know sit. How to do that. <laughs> he was perfectly still, like even like he was like a king on his throne, and then he was like, whoa! <laughs> the whole chair fell, it and he was, was looking around like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> There was no, it looked like a ghost must have grabbed and pulled back. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's an awesome clip. Yeah, and I just fucking yelled at his bitch ass about Ratatouille <laughs> for two and a half minutes. Oh, yeah. ruining the Ratatouille impression. <laughs> <laughs> fucking jerk My favorite off. things is when, when 
It's very rare that Casey bombs, but it does happen every <laughs> once in a while. Now, if you don't know, Casey, during his act, a lot of times will have a lot of photos and things tucked into his pockets for emergencies. So when it's not going well, you very quickly see how much of that shit he's got because it all starts flying out in the first two minutes. <laughs> and I, I, did, I did Darian's show at Green Jay, and I must have pulled out the pictures. I mean, you could have clocked me within 90 seconds. I pulled out every single picture. Oh, yeah? Well, then what about Grimace of the Fall of Berlin? No laughs. Oh, yeah? Then what about me shaking hands with Nelson Mandela? Just like... Oh, yeah? How about this harmonica? <laughs> yeah, I'm <a> th- <laughs> yeah. It is. It's crazy that you fit all that just in the pockets of your pants. You never have, like, a yeah. fanny pack or, like, a... No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that is funny. I know that it's that about myself, too. I don't mean to do it, though. It's just a defense mechanism. Because they... It's like a guaranteed, normally like a guaranteed chuckle. So I'm like, all right, this ain't working. Fucking pull the fire alarm. You, you'd only you'd <laughs> only know that that's what's happening if you were a comic. If uh-huh. you see you a bunch and you know you. Otherwise, I, it's not it's not that weird. But we all kind of know what's going on. Yeah. Like these don't come out that fast if it's <laughs> going right. Why is there a Dragon Ball Z character on the screen by you? Uh, his, he shares a, a surname with Manti Teo. Oh, that's a mercenary Teo. Well. The way that he's standing there glaring, it looks like he's just judging our whole conversation. There's yeah. just been like a grumpy Japanese man. Yeah. I don't like prop comedy. Yeah. Freaking jerko. I killed Grimace. I mean, if it's making you uncomfortable, I can change it. <laughs> well, I, so we were talking about this before. I'm very interested. I I remember it when it was a news story. Manti Teo, he was the what linebacker from Notre Dame that yeah. had an online pretend girlfriend. Uh-huh. Now, I, I always took it as like he was getting... Uh, catfished by someone. That is what happened. Okay. And and for some reason, I remember at the time, because I was, Netflix has a new documentary about it called Untold, The Girlfriend Who Wasn't There. Ooh. But, uh... <clears throat> Spooky. Very scary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember at the time, everybody was like, oh, he's gay. Like, for some reason, everybody went like, you have an online girlfriend? <laughs> he's gay, dude. Look yeah, in the yeah, mirror. That, yeah. True. What? Everybody was saying he was gay. It was That's all crazy. over the media. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, he's gay. <laughs> <laughs> Why did we all think that? Yeah. I know. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I remember. Hey, girlfriend, gay. gay. <laughs> Catfishing just didn't. It wasn't in the zeitgeist back then. Like, it wasn't a thing that happened. So everybody's like, dude. Yeah, we kind of think of catfishing the way we think about it now, partly because of this story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's the first. It, like, ruined his life. Made me so sad for him. Is he still alive? <clears throat> he is, yeah. He's kind of a weird guy, right? He's, he is I mean, a he's... little strange. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, he was, like, you know, like, super religious. So, like, this girl started messaging him. And, yeah, they, like, dated. And all the classic catfish stuff, he tried to FaceTime her. And, oh, it's this, there's no signal. And it was this dude who was, uh, yeah, whatever, like, gay or whatever and like wanted to live the life of a woman and then later after the scandal they transitioned so now she's a woman and uh and now they're together and happily married and now yeah now, now they have three children together it's a beautiful story whoa <laughs> yeah <laughs> together yeah <laughs> That's, whoa okay but yeah man whatever it like ruined his life make him so sad he don't even want to tackle anybody on football anymore and make him so sad i mean was he good enough to keep tackling yeah he was like runner up in the heisman trophy yeah. oh, oh, that's he, right like, he was like, he w- ridiculously good he was really good yeah, yeah. oh he was... so he got tricked <laughs> By man saying he was woman, online, and so. But what what came to a like? Why did that ruin football? How did well, find so out? Was it because he became so famous. <clears throat> so or? his grandma died, mm-hmm. and then that morning, the somebody calls him is like, "I have terrible news. Your girlfriend was killed in a car accident." So the fake girlfriend faked her own death. So then he goes like to the media, and he's like, "You know, guys, like I'm really sad. Like my girlfriend is dead." So it becomes this big inspirational story. That helps him kind of get into the Heisman Trophy race. Of everybody's like, this guy's so good, he's playing through all this pain. But then people start to notice inconsistencies in the way he's talking about it, and they do all this research, and they realize there was no girlfriend. So then it's a big scandal because they don't know if like he was in on making it up for attention or whatever. Yeah, I think Deadspin broke it. Yeah. Oh. Uh, well, so just so you guys know, he was drafted by the Chargers and then played until 2021. Yeah, he, he played like seven, yeah, yeah. eight years. Oh, so he's fine. No. 
Yeah, but it would have, like, he was supposed to be, like, a first-round NFL pick. Like, it cost him, like, millions of dollars. Yeah. Wow. And he can't even sue that person. No, because there's really no crime. Yeah. Yeah. There should be some kind of crime there, though. I mean, I guess you could do, like, defamation for making it look, making you look stupid. Yeah, definitely. And you could do, I don't know, there's got to be something about just pretending to be somebody. I mean, identity theft, maybe. But I don't think there was any monetary things involved with it. Damn. Yeah, you football. You just kill her. That's true. <laughs> right? right? Just yeah. shoot. It's a lady now. She's a lady now. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't mean to say it's. Uh, <laughs> that's, that was, it was it's. It was just it's. Have you been to it's? The bowling alley? No. Oh, it's pretty cool. It's a fun time. Cool. Yeah. It's called it's? Yeah, ITZ. Wow. It's not here. It's up in North Texas. I just needed it. Never a, been. A cord. <laughs> it's, that's, that sounds so old-timey. Yeah. It's. Uts. Like Uts, the chip. Oh, oh, I love potato chip. Yeah. You love Uts? What's your favorite potato chip? Favorite flavor? <sighs> There's this little market called Tom's Market here on South Congress. Tom's? Tom's. Yeah. And they have, they didn't have them yesterday when I went in there, but they get these garlic parmesan freaking damn potato, garlic parmesan Freaking stinky potato chip. Stink so bad, but when you eat them, they're so good. But they didn't have them yesterday, so I think they're gone. But they have, also, if we're counting pretzels chip, which I do, they have garlic parmesan and, like, freaking damn truffle something pretzels, and they're so good. I love pretzels. Pretzels are so salty. Have you had Dots pretzels? Yeah, Dots Dots is, like, the best. So I just recently got to try the Dots honey mustard, Mm -hmm. and they're unreal. I like the original better, but, The red package? Yeah. I hate the blue package. I think if you like the blue package, we should beat you up. I heard I heard it's not good. I haven't it, tried it. It's Southwest. It's not good. It <laughs> sounds appealing. And then you and then you taste it and you're like, dot, why? <laughs> she also has cheese curds huh. that are like but they're closer to like a Cheeto puff. Or like a like a real nice Cheeto with garlic. Delicious. And then they have chicharrones as well. <laughs> I need to try the chicharrones. <laughs> chicharrones. I love chicharrones. Dude, they're so good. I- I think to return to let's talk about me for a little bit, yeah. but <laughs> just kidding. But I think uh, you're talking about it's fun to like watch me mm-hmm. and watch other people watch me. I think a lot of people get a lot of joy out of watching me bomb because it's so different. And I think that is what attracts me to Brody Stevens so much. Is there is a lot of I'd say Brody Stevens is probably my biggest influence. There's a lot of most of his videos that are available is him eating shit. Mm-hmm. And he's just bombing, but he's so committed. And I thought, I just think it's so funny the act of doing something so, so crazy and so out there, and then everybody hating it, but it doesn't phase you. You're yeah. just like, he's just still, you know, still doing you these one liners. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Push and believe. It's just, he's so funny. Do you think other comedians like watching you bomb? Yeah. Like in a, like in a fun way? Or yeah, like in a, a fun way. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 There might be some truth to that. I think, yeah, people have said that. A lot of yeah. people have said that. Yeah, I said that maybe yeah. 20 minutes ago. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. I, it's, it's not... Oh, yeah, I did too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. But it's not in a mean way. Yeah, like, no, no, like, no, 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 And no. that's why I, I hate that I enjoy it because I don't want it to affect Casey's mental health. You know? well, like, but... I don't want you to be sad because I'm like losing my shit over the get, silence. You get to a certain level, though, where you realize, like, we talk about bombing in a different way than we yeah. talked about it when we started comedy. Uh-huh. Now it's like we all understand that it happens to all of us. Yeah. And it's a normal thing, so we can kind of all laugh at each other mm-hmm. in a fun way when it happens. But I think you're very, when you start, you're very sensitive to it. Like, if somebody mm-hmm. were to even bring it up, that it wasn't. You would good. go, like, I did okay, right? Yeah, exactly. But, right. yeah, you become cognizant of when, and it just becomes a joke. Right. Uh, of course, there's sometimes, like, if I eat shit at Secret Show, I'm sad. Mm-hmm. But pretty much any other place, like, if I eat it, it's kind of just a funny story. Yeah. You know, you're just like, you know, I fucking was trying to do whatever, and they hated it. Because <laughs> it is inherently funny if... Doing something that you think is funny and everybody's like, no, nah, we all hate this, but you keep doing it for, yeah. for 10 minutes and yeah. everybody's like, stop also, doing it. Also, there's the idea that, like, you're trying to make them laugh uh-huh. and you're making them angry. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you're literally doing the exact opposite of what you're intending to do. It would be like if someone came to the restaurant and then you brought them food that made them hungrier right. for some reason. Right, right, right. And they're like, why are you doing this? Yeah, stop. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, it's just so fun. I think... Uh, I remember the nights I bombed 
a lot more fondly than like the nights I killed. Like I, I think like a lot of my fondest memories in, in comedy, some of the funniest things that have happened is just me just eating shit. Like those are the things that really stick with me. It's well, just like, what's, funny. What's one that stands out? <clears throat> um, let's see. I bombed a. <laughs> a school in Tehran. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. I bombed. More crimes? That's crazy. <laughs> Dude, Rocket's badass. Those are funny. <laughs> he killed like 100 civilians. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hospital. I know. <laughs> Check this out. I'm dressed as the Joker, dressed as a nurse. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking double costume. Um. <laughs> Yeah, some good ones. Yeah, this one time I did a VFW show for all, like, it was like a biker gang that was only U.S. veterans. Like, yeah. And they were tough, tough dudes. This is in, like, the outskirts of, like, Cascade, Idaho or something. Oh, boy. And, yeah, there's probably some supremacist ties to that group. And uh, they were so mad that I was I was the host, and they hated it. They were <laughs> so upset that I was there. And uh, this one guy, he walked up to the stage while I was doing my hosting. I think I was supposed to do like 15 minutes, which is just too long for a host in general. And he, he's like, give me a mic, give me a mic. I want to sing the national anthem for these boys. <laughs> he, kept, <laughs> he kept like, and I'm just like, I don't have the skill set yet as a comedian to play it off. Be like, you know, get out of here. I was like, stop, <laughs> stop, you can't. Stop. Yes, no, you can. It's my turn. Just here. <laughs> <laughs> and all my material was so, like, if you think I'm bad now, like, my material back then was the same, but there was even less jokes. So it was just all abstract thoughts with zero punchline. So if it's not hitting in the beginning, it's not hitting at all. <laughs> and uh, so I'm, like, trying to tell these half jokes. <laughs> and everyone's just, like, give him the mic. have a huff? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. There are a bunch of guys like, what? <laughs> and the crowd was, like, supportive <laughs> of giving him the mic. They were like, go on, give it to him. I was like, I don't want to give it to him. Let this, him sing it. That's not what this is. Let him sing it. <laughs> but I did give it to him, and then he sung, like, 45 seconds of the national anthem, or however long it is. I think it's, like, seven minutes long or something. <laughs> Last uh, night, someone tried to <laughs> sing the national anthem at Cutthroat Karaoke. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was unbelievable. <laughs> and then 20 seconds into it, everyone is booing and cutting him off. <laughs> and Bishop, that's hosting it, leads over and goes, I don't think I've ever heard that song not all the way through. <laughs> like, I've never heard someone stop it prematurely. <laughs> that was so funny because everyone was cutting it. Everyone, <clears throat> half the crowd... <laughs> it really brought everybody together because half the crowd was cutting it because they hated the United States and they're liberal weirdos. Uh -huh. And then half of the crowd was cutting it because he was so bad he was disrespecting the song. And for a second, <laughs> everyone was just together wanting this guy to stop singing <laughs> the national. He and looks like uh, Brad Pitt from Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh -huh. That's just that's who this guy is. He moved here not long ago and he's gone to the heckle mic a couple times. Yeah. And <laughs> he just looks like a well-dressed pedophile. And so after someone says that, everyone's like, yep, we're done here. <laughs> it's just silent for a minute. But he tried to sing the national anthem last night. It's He's just, a comic? Yeah, I guess. That's funny. That's so funny. Uh, I love the, like, so you can, like, <clears throat> how big is the comedy scene in Boise? Uh, it's not that big. I mean, there's probably, like, 30 comedians at the at maximum like the best mic of the week would normally be like on thursdays uh -huh. and there'd be like 30 comics okay but as far as people who like grind and actually do all the mics probably like 15 people okay yeah so and we're all really so close all the shows are just like rotating of yeah those. yeah the shows is all like yeah five of the 15 yeah but uh yeah when i was when i first came up there there was a club and the club was good like I remember meeting, like, Andrew Santino there, or seeing him, not meeting him, but being like, that's him. And yeah. uh, <laughs> some comics would come through there. and So the club was good, and they would get big audiences. So when I first moved there, I wasn't very good. So I was like, oh, I'll just stay. <clears throat> and they were, like, saying I could host at the club. So I started doing that, and I was really bad at it, <laughs> at hosting. And they eventually banned me from hosting just because I kept eating shit so hard. <laughs> I hosted, like, three different weekends, and... God bless if I even did good once. They were just like, because it just didn't have it figured out. But, yeah, then I started dating a girl. So I was dating a girl. And I, was, I got stuck out there. But, yeah, the club was nice. And, uh, yeah, I have a lot of good friends out there. Didn't Boise, it, like, 
I swear in my brain for some reason it's gotten like expensive to live there, right? Yeah, that's what people say. Yeah, I guess. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I think like the real estate's really expensive. Okay. Yeah. But the cost of living, like otherwise, wasn't terrible. No, it's not that bad. It's so small townish. Yeah. Yeah, Boise's gorgeous. Boise, Boise's amazing. Idaho's a really beautiful state. But it's just really boring. And I wasn't, like, I was, like, sober, like, most of, like, 99% of the time I was there. So there's, like, nothing to fucking do. Like, it's oh, just a yeah. really small town. So Yeah. It's just boring. So I wanted to go to damn big city. And now you're here. Yeah. It's been fucking great. Yeah, I've been here for, like, a year, over a year. It's been so nice. Man, you've had some fucking crazy good highlights. I think you were the first person <laughs> in Austin to pull off the... The triple crown of Vulcan Creek Sunset in one night. Oh yeah, yeah, I did do that. Yeah, and then that was, yeah, that was yeah. the night that Red Band saw me at Creek. So that was a big night for me. Yeah, and then I got fucking hammered, and I told Winston I was gonna burn his house down. <laughs> I was gonna say, I was gonna say, didn't you get sober like right after this night? <laughs> This was a wild night, dude. I got, I got wasted, and I was stayed at Winston Shaw's house, but I hardly knew Winston at the time. And I was, I guess I found like a, I was doing all kinds of crazy shit. I was totally fine, and then I smoked a grav, and I never smoke weed, and I was fine after the first one. Then I was like, keep them coming, and I smoked another one that I blacked the fuck out. And I, I guess I found a bag of nails, and I was dropping it all over Winston's carpet. And he was like, where did you get the nails? And, he, and, he, and I kept going up to him like, I'm gonna fucking burn your house down, you piece of shit. Like I kept like threatening to burn his house down. Can, can we? Can I ask? Please, just can we settle this once and for all? Did you shit in his litter box? No, I didn't <laughs> shit in his litter box. It was cat. He has a cat. As <laughs> Winston's convinced you shit in his litter box. I told him that as a joke. <laughs> and then he was looking at me the next time I saw him, and I was like, you know I didn't shit in the litter box, right? <laughs> I could tell in his eyes he was like, like, dude, this guy's this guy's the real deal. He shit in my shit litter box. my litter box. box. Like Scary Movie 2 or whatever <laughs> when he poops in the litter <laughs> box. <laughs> Oh, it's so funny. Dude, that's so funny. No, I drank, I think I drank one more time after that, and I went out in the town, and I woke up at some podcast studio, like, 40 minutes away, with oh, fucking Gary Faust, yeah, and I lost my phone and my wallet and all my shit, and I had to track it down blind, like it was the 1980s, I had to drive around with no directions, so hungover. No phone or anything, and I was like, I'm too old for this shit, dude. Plus, I have a terrible substance abuse problem, and I've known that years ago, so I was like, we're calling it quits. <laughs> we're hanging the boots up again. <laughs> so I've been doing this shit since I was 14 years old, losing Another all my boot shit. Another the steel-toed basket, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Another boot in the old <laughs> steel-toed basket. Yeah. Dude, I remember that night uh, because I got a picture like, hey, I think I have Casey's phone and wallet from <laughs> the guys at the podcast studio. But I thought that they were at the Gary podcast studio. Which is so did I. I drove there, and they were like, we don't have that stuff. It was, where was it? It was the Sunset podcast studio yeah. up north. It's like in the Rosedale area. It was like way the fuck away. Yeah. And I had no GPS because I had no phone. If you don't, so I. I was like, I don't physically know. So I had to, like, hand write directions, like, 5.5 miles, turn left, and all this shit. It took me, like, an hour to get there. You should have used MapQuest. Oh. Found a FedEx and printed it out yeah. on MapQuest. You don't think about how much it fucks your shit up to not, like, have a way to get it. Because I didn't really know Austin at the time, so I was like, mm -hmm. I, have, I have no. Just having a panic attack driving, just and so hungover. the over. roads here are a fucking nightmare. There's, yeah. Outside of the highway, there's nothing that lets you know which direction is really anything. Yeah. <laughs> so you're just like, oh, okay. <laughs> Good luck. Oh, it's terrible. I used to just live like that in college in a perpetual state of waking up in a different place every morning for years. Mm. And I just wake up, damn, piss pant, dude. You always piss pant. Oh, man. <laughs> How bad is that? <laughs> Fucking cold. So cold. <laughs> wake up big shivers. And it's not just from the piss, it's from the alcoholism. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get it. You get it. Fucking big riff. But yeah, I used to, and I, I just like, it was that feeling, a feeling I've known so well over the years. And I was like, we got to hang them up, dude. I'm, I'm hanging the cleats up, bro. But I'll be back. I relapse about once a year, so it's about, we're almost full circle. Oh, nice. Cool. I hope I'm there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. To curb it. You know? I'll, I'll page you. Yeah. yeah. Dude, uh, 
I like I've waned on and off how much I drink, and I like I've started to be able to recognize when it's a problem and to ease back. But my recruiting visits for college football. Uh-huh. So you know I'm six one at the time, like two seventy. I ran like a four nine forty. I was real strong. Yeah, so, but I was only that tall, so I couldn't really go to any of the D one places without getting laughed at. But uh-huh. all the D three schools, because I had good scores, were like they really wanted to court me for football there because they're like big program whatever Mm -hmm. so they would take their football players and be like hey take this guy out have a great night make him want to come to our school yeah and the school that i went to the night i went there for the recruiting visit it was an all guys school and i was like this is gonna be gay there's just dudes you know Uh and he was like check this out and opens the dorm room and there's like a bunch of girls so i just got fucking (laughs) tanked and just partying (laughs) and having fun and a great night i don't remember how the night ends but i wake up on a futon Shivering, I'm just pissed <laughs> everywhere. Not just my pants, but the whole futon is soaked through. Like it's a young man's game. It had to yeah. have been all of the piss from the night had just been in me, and I was like, ah, sleep, a perfect time. <laughs> so not only did I just soak through, I have to take all that. I like fold them up and like wring my pants out, oh, and then I God. find another pair of clothes where I throw them on. I leave the wet stuff in their shower. And then I go to the orientation for, like, the football players that are on their visits. <laughs> so I'm just sitting there just reeking of booze and piss. Just like, <laughs> so you guys want me to come here, huh? <laughs> you guys think I'd be a valuable asset to your... See, and that's where I went. <laughs> Do you think I'm beautiful? <laughs> yeah. You guys fucking love it, huh? That's piss on your shit. Yeah. Dude, last night I was sitting with Fuzzy in Backer Creek and... Uh, I had some water in my hands, and Fuzzy Fuzzy has this new joke that's unbelievable. And he made me laugh, and I went like that. And somehow I got, like, some water, like, right here. <laughs> and uh, and then all of a sudden, there was, like, 15 comedians just around me and Fuzzy, and they were all pointing at my crotch, <laughs> going, pee pants, pee pants. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Fuzzy, fuzzy, and solidarity takes a full cup of water and just goes like this. But it's so much more than I did than, I, than what I had. So it looks like he took a full piss. Of his head. Not, not a little leak. And, and fuzzy immediately goes like, "This was a huge mistake." <laughs> He did the Billy Madison. Yeah, exactly. That's so yeah, nice yeah. of him. I know. It's so cool. <laughs> we were doing punchline battles, and we had a team where we were like, all right, we'll be team, team pee pants. Yeah, it was against y'all. Yeah. yeah. And so we had to all put, <laughs> like, a stale water on our pants. So Lucas and whoever else was on the team wore, like, light-colored pants. I think Dan Pietetsky, maybe. But they put, like, a little bit of water, and then I was like, no, we're going all out, boys. And I did what Fuzzy did, thinking, like, this will really look like I peed. But it was so much. And then yeah. I was just, like, wet and cold. like, Fuck! Yeah. I'm gonna tell jokes with my fucking pee pants. And my team, we all did British accents. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. The crowd fucking hated both of our teams, <laughs> which was the only teams there. Yeah. <laughs> the crowd had nothing British left on the show to like. Yeah. They were just like, we don't want to be involved with any of this. <laughs> That was when Punchline said got to the point where we'd all done it like five or six times. <laughs> we're like, we got to make this fun for us. Like, <laughs> yeah. the, the crowd was no longer a factor. <laughs> 7 p.m. on a Tuesday, we're doing piss pants stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, Miles was on your team and did the British accent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dylan Sullivan did it his whole set. Oh, yeah. yeah that's right. like Ten yeah. minutes. <laughs> and he was kind of eating it. It was fucking hilarious. <laughs> we, we were all in that side room losing yeah, our shit. Yeah. You know, sane love. He's so funny. I fucking love that one. <laughs> Dude, <clears throat> the Austin comedy scene is so much fucking fun. Oh, we just have so much fun all the time. Yeah, it's so great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, sound, that sounded sarcastic. Yeah, it as, wasn't. Even when you yeah. unsarcastic did it, yeah. it sounded sarcastic. Like, no, it's great. It's great. <laughs> God damn, dude. No, it is. We have so like much fun. Boise, you piece of shit. <laughs> I love it here. All my boys. Freaking boys and girls. So fun, man. What do we have on time? 50? Nice. American woman. Yeah, let's just end by just all singing a version of American woman. I love it so much last night that I weeped. <laughs> <laughs> Wept. Wept. Yeah. Weeped. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Weep. It's okay. Whatever. It's okay. <laughs> oh. Now I'm going to cry about the fact that I don't know words. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. How about that? Yeah, uh, cry is a better word for you. <laughs> yeah. But that's oh. not what happened. Yeah. 
you weeped. Yeah, I wept. Yeah. That's so was now it was all in all honesty, was Fuzzy weirded out by it? Or what was he doing? I don't know. When I started talking about my fuzzy and my lucky hat later, I could tell he was really starting to think I was insane. (laughs) 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 Uh, uh, Yeah, I don't know. I actually don't really care either. I'm kind of fine with fuzzy thinking I'm fucking crazy. Yeah, keep him on his toes. uh, Because honestly, because I wasn't crying out of being upset. or I was just so happy. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm not going to feel weird about being happy. I'm not going to let people do that to me. Yeah. <laughs> so if he thinks I'm crazy, that's fine. But his good news made me fucking cry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fucking great. Did so you have the new, the Grimby pod is coming out soon. Yeah, I think we're going to come out with the first episode tomorrow. So it'll probably be, uh, if you're listening to this, it'll probably be already out. So, yeah. Yeah, we've been doing the the renewed Grimace Half Hour Power Hour. I think we have to na- change the name to the Grimby Half Hour Power Hour for legal reasons. Okay. That's what the legal team said. <laughs> but, so, yeah. It's over at legal. Yeah. Sad. <laughs> Gotta make it Grimby. Which is just Jimmy Clifford. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah it's it's, <laughs> it's me and Kat Swatner, uh, my girlfriend, a great comedian in Austin. And uh, it's all Grimby all the time. It's all improvised stories about Grimace. So I think we're going to have Fuzzy on on Friday. So. Amazing. Then we'll get you guys on there soon enough. Talk yeah. some Grimby. I lo- I'm a big Grimby fan. Yeah, it's edited really fun. We got this great guy, JJ, doing it. And uh, so we'll say something about Grimby. It- he pops up. Sucking Nancy Pelosi freaking toes. And he'll do it. He'll do a picture. It's so great. Yeah, yeah. So Dude, JJ is extremely talented. He's really good. Yeah. I, uh, I did that Jimmy Clifford podcast, the Jimmy Clifford mm-hmm. show. And then JJ edited it. Yeah. Ed- edited it. Ed- edited it. Edited it. Edited it. Edited it. Sorry. Weeped. Weep. Edited it. Edited it. Weep. Weep. Edited it. Edited it. All right. This is gone. <laughs> no, it's going fine. <laughs> Mike, it's going fine. <laughs> Trust yourself. <laughs> I, was telling, I was telling a story about uh, the video. They have like a African version of Bollywood that uh-huh. makes like. Oh, yeah. 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 Video, but I was telling him like an African Top Gun. Yeah, Somaliwood. There, you, thank you, Somaliwood. Good job, Jerry. But the dude's. I was like, looking for. One. I was talking about the one. guy in the plane. And I was like, "Oh no, Maverick, we are going down!" And he edited me into a plane and made it. Oh, that's it, hilarious! Like a little clip in the pocket. It's fucking incredible. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't get. Yeah, he's does get paid enough. He does so much work. I asked him how long it took him to edit the first episode of the Grimace Half Hour Power. He's like, uh, I don't know, like sixteen hours. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> How much are you getting paid? Like fifty dollars? Yeah. How do you do this? Sweatshop labor. Yeah. But he's a good boy. I'm so excited. I, I cared so much about the Grimace Half Hour Power Hour. I dedicated like three probably about three years of my life to it. We put out about ninety episodes, me and Pierce Rush, my friend, uh old friend from my drug days, one of my best friends, uh, who lives in Boise. So he's ahead. Good he, job, Pierce. He's gone. He's dead? No, he's oh. he's alive. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he gone. Yeah, he gone. <laughs> she gone. No. Cheers. He's alive. <clears throat> but yeah, so I'm really excited to have it out. So this will be fun. Yeah, I'm excited for it to come back. I uh I'm I'm a big fan. Uh now will you be wearing your sweatsuit of of Grimace and Doom? Yeah, I think I wore it the first episode. And uh man, we had some laughs, I'll tell you. And it was so fun and so hot. Every time that I see you in it, I'm excited. And then my favorite part is seeing you right afterwards when you are just, like, regretting it. You're yeah, like, I don't know why I keep doing this. It's so get, fucking hot in here. I can't get it. Like, it's like they say, like, if you cover, like, if you paint yourself head to toe. You know how people say this? Yeah. Uh, you're, yeah, this is always a topic of conversation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> your pores can't breathe. That's what it feels like when you put it on. You're like, I don't feel like I'm absorbing enough oxygen. Like, <laughs> feel like I have sickle cell. Yeah. <laughs> Not a good, I don't know if that's a side effect of sickle cell, but. <laughs> <laughs> I feel immune to malaria. Yeah. <laughs> it's like sickle cell. Uh, but it's fun. Yeah, I'm also the co-host on William Montgomery's show now, so that's exciting. Those oh, are on YouTube. Yeah. Um, yeah, and stand up in my Patreon, uh, Casey Rocket. Got a lot of good stuff on there. Yeah, yeah. a lot of good stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's everywhere. Big fun. Uh, do you have any fun shows coming up where people can go see you live? I, yeah, I had some friends in town uh, recently. They were like, "Hey, it's cool that you're up and all, but like, can we see Casey? You know where <laughs> Casey is performing?" I was like, "Oh, thank you so much. That's so nice of you." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have some fun stuff. I'm doing. Uh, this will come out next Monday. 
Okay. 22nd. 22nd. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, on the 27th, I'll be at Spider House Ballroom doing a really fun show. And the next night, I'll be at Darian's Green Jay show. And that'll be really fun. So, Woo! uh, yeah, go to Green Jay. Big Green Jay. You got any cool stuff coming up, Darian? Just Green Jay? What else? Uh, yeah, And I'm starting my own show at Native Hostel on September 1st also. Oh, shit. Oh. We don't know yet. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Have a good night. Uh, Thursday, September 1st. Excellent. Yeah. Me and my... <clears throat> I think I'll do the big room. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be me and Michael Fractor, and I think it's going to be something with improvised stand-up, so it should be pretty oh, fun. Oh, good. So, yeah. That'll be fun. Michael Fractor of Netflix's 20-somethings. What? Yes. Right. Star of Netflix is 20 somethings, Michael Fractor. Excellent. Dear friend, close associate. Uh, and for me, uh, my special will be coming out probably the same day as this episode. Uh, so it's done. It's, they're done with the, they're <laughs> done with the special. And now I'm getting <laughs> clips made of it, and then it's going to be comedy time. Yeah, buddy. I'm excited. Um, those are you for you. This, Cheese and cheddar's for the boy. They uh, they didn't have peanut butter crackers. It's always, is that your go-to gas station snack? Yeah. You know, I only get up when I'm doing the first podcast of the day. You know, <laughs> so if I don't even have a podcast, I'm getting up by 9, 10 p.m. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so uh, whatever, man. So this is my breakfast. I had a cup of cheese. So, yeah, if I need a little breakfast from the gas station, I'll get a little peanut butter cracker. Okay. Now, you I mentioned 7 Do you have a specific 7 Eleven snack? Because I, I treat 7 Eleven like a restaurant. I, yeah, I do too. I like the buffalo chicken, those long, they look like hot dog, but it's chicken. Yeah. Like those. Yeah. I like the taco taquitos. If yeah. they're hot, they rarely are, but I'll eat them cold. I do it almost every day. Yeah, I understand. So, yeah. <laughs> now, have you been to Quick Trip? Yeah, Quick Trip is markedly better. Have you yeah. tried their buffalo chicken rollers? Yeah, it's really good. Boy, howdy. So good. Boy, boy, and howdy. the spicy chicken taquito. So Ooh, good. daddy. American woman. I worked at 7-Eleven for a while, and I lived on the cheeseburger bites. Oh, God, was, yeah. But here's the real move. you get Because it's, it's burger mm-hmm. stuffed with cheese. You put it in a hot dog bun, and then you put it under the nacho cheese. No. <laughs> oh, you oh, rascal. Daddy. <laughs> uh, you wash that down with a Dr. Pepper Slurpee and you've got diabetes. It's, it's so good. <laughs> See you soon, Jesus Daddy. Yeah, man, this is making me hungry. Well, uh, thank you so much for coming on Highly Social uh, and uh, <clears throat> doing a, not Worm this time, but we'll be back soon with the Worm. Yeah, guys, I'll be back next time with the Worm. Thanks for having me, Mike. It's so fun. I, I adore you. I adore you as well. Thank you, Casey. <laughs> thank you, Darian. See you guys next so week. Fun. Thanks for getting Highly Social.